hopefully, hopefully we're all good for uh, workshop week for Clay Buddies. Um, here's an example of a finished teapot that just came out of my recent wood firing. So every so the the body of the teapot, which you can see if I show you the bottom of it, is actually a little triangular. It's off circle. Um, so that was thrown on the wheel, altered. Um, and then everything else is made from hand-built parts, including the, the spout. And then I've got a pulled and slightly carved handle on it as well. So this is kind of the end product of what we're shooting for, something along those lines. Um, we'll see where the clay takes me as far as changing the handle and the lid and the, the spout and that sort of thing goes. So um, I already have some bodies thrown. Um, and I'm going to try to make a YouTube video of this um, exact same process um, and post that up. And hopefully we can, uh, you can see that then afterwards too. So on that, um, we'll delay no farther and uh, hopefully get going here. So let me just adjust the camera angle here so you can... Let's see. I was going to use my iPad, but it, the iPad wasn't letting me live stream for some reason. So let me just tweak the angle on the camera here. Sorry about this. This is a fun... There we go. Hopefully you can see my workspace and I can read your comments here. Hello, Bloomington. I'm in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, by the way. So I'm probably not going to answer every single um, camera and then scroll back and answer any questions. So I have a couple teapot bodies that I threw earlier today. We're going to go with this one, which is like the one that I showed you an example. So I've, I threw this um, without a bottom on the wheel, cut it off, and then I've altered it, altered it. So it's roughly triangular. And I know I've, I've showed some videos of how I do my faceting and that sort of thing. I'd be happy to, um, I've got some up on my YouTube. Otherwise, I might do some more um, Clay Buddies live streaming and whatnot later on. So, we have, um, I've got to put a slab bottom on it first. So, I have some slabs that I threw earlier that I'm going to set this on. So, I've got a slab that I threw out earlier. Um, if you've not thrown slabs, um, I'll show you that here in just a second. So all you have to do is take a little bit of clay, um, a little bit more than what you'll need for whatever project you're trying to accomplish. Stacy Morgan just messaged me. I don't know why she's messaging me. She's asking me if I'm good to go even though I'm already going. Stacy Morgan, so silly. All right, so to throw a slab, I'm just got a piece of clay I pinched flat and am throwing it, literally throwing a slab. Um, and so this is a good, I don't have a slab roller in my home studio, so this is a good way. And then if you're, you know, really persnickety, you can, uh, you know, use a rolling pin on it or whatnot. This sort of thing would be fine. Um, so earlier, um, it's leather hard and all I'm going to do is I don't like this texture. I've got masonite, ta uh, a masonite table and I don't like the texture very much. So I'm just going to rub this down a little bit and scrape slash compress some of this texture out of here. And this texture really only bothers me on the bottom side of the teapot. So I've got a little piece of wood here that I'm going to flip this over onto that doesn't really have much in the way of texture. All right, so there we go. I'm going to set my teapot body. Hello, Gettysburg. Hey, Doug. Hi, Debbie. Hi, St. Louis. New Jersey. Hello. Hello, Florida. All right, so I'm going to set this on there. And then... I use one of these to do my scoring with. 
Ooh, we'll see if I can get it focus on there. Eh, it's not quite going for it, but it's just a bunch of little like needle tool things. So I'm just gonna trace an outline here real quick. Doesn't need to be exact. Set my body off to the side here. So now I've got a nice outline and I don't slip and score so much as I wet and scratch. So I'm going to apologize right now. If you guys hear some weird little whining noises in the background, my wife and I foster um, rescue dogs. And we have some puppies that got spayed and neutered yesterday. And a couple of them are quite whiny today. Because So I'm wetting this down and scratching where those are going to make a connection. And I've found that just this simple wet and scratch, um, I'm, I'm using Brooklyn Red Clay from Standard, Standard number 308, which is a fairly groggy, pretty forgiving um, high iron stoneware that I fired a cone eight um, in my electric kiln. The example that I showed at the beginning of the feed is actually wood fired um, with some of my reclaim clay. Doo -doo 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 -doo. It does not have to be exact. Doug's being sassy. Yeah, puppins. All right, so now that I've got that scratched, I'm going to scratch the bottom of my teapot body. Here it is. A little piece of foam goes a long ways. So this is the way the bottom looks like. So I'm just going to add a smidge of water. Doesn't take much. Like I said, I, this was thrown. So this portion of it was actually the wettest part because it would have been the bottom of my throne piece. So I'm just scratching that up really good. There we go. And I'm gonna set that right on my and line that up a little bit. I'm not applying much in the way of pressure yet. And if I need to get in there, I've got, where is it? I'm staring, push the bottom out a little bit. So you'll notice also that a lot of people use a, a banding wheel when they're doing this sort of stuff. I don't necessarily use a banding wheel very often because a lot of times I don't want it spinning around when I'm applying pressure. And if I'm working on this little piece of wood like I am, this little square of wood, um, that, that lets me move it around easily enough without distorting the form at all. So I'm just applying some pressure and wiggling it back and forth a little bit. Here my scale. And then I'm going to take a needle tool and I'm cutting, I'm, I'm leaving myself plenty of extra clay, maybe like a half centimeter to a centimeter off the sides um, so I can work with that later if I so choose. And I can't think of a reason for me keeping the leather hard scrap, so that's going to go off to the side. Boom. All right, so I'm going to roll that a little bit um, every direction. And that's just pressing that bottom clay, that bottom slab into my teapot. So I'm just trying to maintain that nice shape. I think this is going to be my front with the spout. So that'll go in there somewhere. And I'll have the handle on the wide side. All right, so that, I'm gonna let that set up for now. And that's just gonna go right off to the side. All right, let me see, are there any so far? When you say thrown, yes, I was through that on the wheel. So I just threw that real quick without a bottom. 
and cut it off. I'm going to post a YouTube video of the whole process as well. So that's going to hopefully help out a little bit too. Um, so that was thrown on the wheel. <laughs> Whiskey's concerned about the puppies. That's funny. Um, Whiskey is Stacy's dog. For those of you that don't know, he's a big baby of a German shepherd. Um, yeah, so thrown on the wheel, nothing on the bottom, cut it off, altered, and then I let it set up in front of a fan for about an hour and a half before we started the video. So they're leather hard, but still plenty malleable and uh, flexible without cracking. So the next thing is I need to have a spout and a lid and a handle. So for the spout, um, this is a little trick I learned um, at a workshop with Liz Lurie. Um, Look her up if you're not familiar with Liz Lurie, L-I-Z, and her last name's Lurie, L-U-R-I-E. Um, she makes some fantastic work. So I've got a hunk of clay here, and I'm just going to shape it by pinching into a rough spout shape. So I'm just using my fingers and pinching the clay into... You know, whatever shape you want your spout to be. If you want it long and skinny, do that. If you want it not long and skinny, do that. Um, the flat portion, I'm tapping out on the table to, to get that. So all I'm doing is I'm slowly forming this into a spout shape. So once I get this... Um, a lovely shape we all know the yeah anyways so once i've got the teapot something like this now i'm gonna i've got another one but i need this to set up um so this was fresh clay way too soft for me to sculpt and work with and it's too soft for me to hollow out so I'm, i would get this and i'd set this um this will be the start of a spout But I would set this off to the side to firm up a little bit. Um, I've got a couple teapot bodies that I thrown, so I'm going to keep this one just off to the side for later. So I have one that I made earlier today um, that has started to firm up a bit. And when I look at my teapot body, I want to line this up with what I think is going to look good. So a lot of times what I'll do is if you, I'll set it kind of behind it and see what that profile looks like to get it just right. So see where I need to cut that. there and I might make a little mark with a needle tool so I have it the right line and shape so there's my needle tool line and I'm going to use um, I've got this wire knife these are from uh, Bill Van Gilder you can get them on his website so I'm just going to cut this I'm fine going from the top I'm pulling back into the bottom corner. You'll notice I didn't go quite right along my line clay at this point because I can always cut more clay off. It's hard to add clay back. Um, and actually that's, I just need to take a little bit more off. Smooth that out again. And so that's getting to be a little better shape. Yeah, I think I like that. So next is I need to start hollowing it out. So I have a couple different tools that I'll use for that. Where'd I set them? Doo -doo -doo. All right, so I've got this. I just bent a piece of um, wire. So I'll use, I use this. You can also just use like a regular wire tool. 
um, but this I found works well for me. So I've got my spout here and I'm just gonna start excavating a little bit. And I wanna leave some clay, plenty of clay on the actual edge. So I've got something to attach it to. I don't wanna make the walls too thin. But I'm just slowly starting to hollow this out. Um, if you guys have ever done like a Kirinuki cup or something like that, it's a similar sort of process. Melissa Weiss, if you follow her on Instagram, just did some videos of her doing um, some Kirinuki cup. It was like a three-part step-by-step thing that was pretty neat. I think I'm going to try making... Uh, my wife and I are planning on making some Kirinuki cups. I don't know if we'll get to them tonight or tomorrow or what, but I thought that would be fun. Let's see, am I missing any? So this is, this is the spout. Yep. So you can see how I'm starting to hollow that out. There we go. Um, and I'm going to go as deep as I dare. And that's about as deep as I dare. So it's about that. So I've got it most of the way hollowed out. I can pinch it a little bit and smooth things out with my finger on the inside. Um, so now I've got to go in from the end of the spout to finish. So... Uh, one thing that I actually find works really well is a, a drill bit. So I'm just going to go in with my drill bit, twisting it just like you'd use a drill bit. Sometimes you got to clean them off a little bit. So now I'm just going to smooth out and firm up the tip of my spout here. I don't want any weak spots. There we go. I'll tilt you up a little bit here. Um, is it for, I hope it's not freezing. Sorry if the video is not going super consistent for y'all. So I'm going to use the back side of my needle tool to get in there and just compress some of that clay to help support while I'm make, finishing out my spout end here or working on it. I'm going to go back. Um, I can use a needle tool to start hollowing out. Whatever tools that you're used to carving with, just, you know, stick with what works. To get clay out of the interior of your spout. So I'm hollowing it out. My assumption is if you want, if you miss something because it froze, um, it shouldn't be frozen once it, once it's like a posted video and not live anymore. Um... Sometimes my connection here, I don't know why we pay plenty of money for fast internet. Um, and I'm not like out in the boondocks or anything. Um, but sometimes it freezes on me. Just doing these live videos, I'm not sure why. Um, so I'm just smoothing out the inside and the outside right now. Okay, so this is starting to look like an okay spout. Um, don't be afraid to add a little bit of water. So the, the tip of my spout's getting a little on the dry side, so I'm adding just a little bit of water so it doesn't dry out too much. And let's see here. We're going to go in there again with my needle tool. So I'm just cleaning that out. 
to have any, I don't want like a little, you know, it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth on the inside of here, but I don't want a bunch of boogers of clay. And my finger can only get in so far. So, um, like I said, I'm gonna go back in with my end of my needle tool to smooth out the inside of the tip here. And I'm gonna come back and clean up the tip here in a little bit. But this is about ready for me to get attached. And again, I this doesn't look, this looks pretty rough right now, um, but I'm gonna be carving it here after it gets attached. So I marked on my teapot where I wanted that attachment. And it looks like I can get rid of a little bit of extra clay right up here. There we go. Getting this lined up nice. And I have a little extra clay on this side, so I'm just trimming away the extras. And I want it up a little bit higher. Still have a little bit too much on this side. And trim the top a little bit. There we go. So it's a, just an exercise and just a little bit at a time. Kind of like the handle is going to really um, kind of make up for the fact that this spout looks a little big right now. Um, is thanks, Stacy. Yeah, boogers be gone. That's important. So one thing that's important is um, the end of this is how far I'm going to be able to fill up the inside. So you'll notice that lines up with right about here on the top, which is about as full as, as you'd fill the teapot anyways. So that's pretty good there. Um, this top part sticks a little bit above here, which I'm happy with. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, whoops. There we go, set that back on there. I want it, yeah. And make a little outline. So now I know where that's gonna go. And before I do anything else, I need to start putting holes in. Let me move a couple things here. All right, sitting is nice. So I've gotta put some holes in here um for filter so my wife and i i don't drink very much tea but when i do it's always loose leaf so i'm going to put some holes so i'm just lining up a pattern here it helps i think it looks nice when somebody looks into a teapot and they can see some sort of nice pattern um, this goes a little bit better now but this will work for us now the trick is is you need to have more uh, total surface area of the holes that you put into the teapot it has to be greater than the end of the spout. And the reason for that is you want that flow to push the water out the end of the spout and you're less likely to have little dribbles and stuff then. Okay, so there's my rough version. All right, it's a ni relatively neat, nice pattern. Um, I'm gonna take a fettling knife to finish cleaning it up. So I've got a fettling knife here. I'm just gonna go inside and scrape a lot of the extra boogers. You can see all the boogers that got scraped off. 
make sure you don't gouge it. If you've got any gouges, you can take your fettling knife actually and flip it around and use the handle to smooth out the clay a little bit. I'm just getting rid of some of the boogers on the inside. We'll get rid of the boogers on the outside. And then I'm just gonna punch through these holes one more time and clean them up a little bit. I'm using the back side of that same drill bit and I'm just wiggling it around in there. Help compress the clay and I want a nice, nice opening that doesn't have too many boogers on it. Another thing is I can this is a little firmer, like a, a fly. I can come in with a, with a loop tool and just scrape some of those burrs off on the inside so there's nothing sharp to get caught when you're cleaning. <sighs> All right, so now time to wet and scratch again. So I'm going to, I'm dipping my scratching tool in water. Oh, I bet you a countersink bit or a countersink of some sort would definitely work well. Um, some people have some tools that have that little, um, sometimes you can use like a pen tip, something that's got a little more of a um, bevel or like a cone shaped end to it works well. So I'm dipping my tool into the water and then scratching. And then I'm gonna do the same to my spout. I'm gonna use so I'm just using my thumbs right now to finish the attachment here and push those pieces into each other. Sorry for the yippy puppies in the background. <laughs> I know they got altered yesterday, so they're being really loud and whiny today. So now that that's that's loosely pressed on there. Um, I use these, they're from Royal Sovereign, uh, these rubber shapers. And so I can use this to go around. And whenever I have an attachment, you've got two choices. You can either blend it in, and if you blend it in, you gotta make it look real nice. Or you can emphasize the attachment and say, nope, this is definitely an appendage added on. And uh, it's gonna have a line there, which is the way that I am going to go about this with the spout. It's also how I treat the handle, which we'll get to here shortly. So you can see how that's just smoothing up those attachments, cleaning them up. All right, so I'm gonna let this set up a little longer now. Uh, hey, Emily, awesome, you're wearing the shirt. Hey, Denise, sorry, I probably missed a couple questions here. I'm not torturing any puppies, Stacy. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's some whiny puppies in the background. They get to go home. They're, they're six out of the eight puppies we have at our house right now are adopted and are going home, hopefully on Monday. Okay, next we've got the lid to do. So this is, you can see how flexible 
if I hold this over the top, you can see that this is pretty flexible and some of the clay that I've got sitting out is about the same amount of flexible. So this is another slab that I threw earlier, just a little thicker than the last one and this one's gonna be for the lid. So I'm gonna move this out of the way here for just a second. I'm gonna smooth this out again and compress at the same time. I really like the green mud tool ribs. And I'm just going to do that on the opposite side as well. So this will be for the lid. So a lot of times what I do to start some of these is I have a set of round cookie cutters. And these work out really well for a lot of different things. Um, sorry, it keeps freezing on you. Um, my spout points down a little bit. It, I, I think it helps with, with some pouring. It's gonna, um, I'm going to tweak it a little bit here once it sets up a little bit more as well. So it's not quite finished yet. Um, if you think about if once you set it straight back, the water, it's, there's not going to be a lot of water stored in the, the spout will run back or down and then you're, you've got a little less chance of it dripping everywhere. Um, so I'm picking out a size cookie cutter that is larger than the top, which I think I'm gonna have to go one size bigger. All right, and then I'm gonna pick one that fits, that almost fits inside, but not quite. There we go. All right, so now that I have those two, I'm gonna push down with one of them. That's gonna be the actual lid. Got room for both, okay. I'm gonna go on this corner. All right, so I'm cutting out my cookie of clay. And so this, like I said, these are going to get carved and sculpted a bit. Yet, yeah, this is going to be on top of here. Now, just leaving it flat like that is a little uninspired. I don't really like how flat that is. So I'm just going to use my thumbs and my fingers to round it ever so slightly. So it's got a little bit of a dome which looks much nicer in my opinion. Just kind of stretch the clay out to get a little bit of a dome. There we go. Okay, so there's my lid. Now, the other one is going to help me make my um, the flange that goes on the inside of my lid. So the reason I use the cookie cutter um, is I want something that's close to the right size to begin with. And if I'm using something that's already curved a little bit, I don't need this. And I go one size up. Uh, maybe two sizes for this one. Um, it's already curved a little bit. I have less issues with stuff cracking. Because we all know crack kills. All right? So nobody do crack. Crack kills. It might be on my end, too. Um, sometimes my connection goes out for a second here and there. Don't know why that happens. Someone wants to call up AT&T for me and tell them to fix it, then that'd be great. So I've got this little ring here that I have to line up with the top of my spout. So that, I'm gonna change your angle here. Hopefully you can see that. 
a little bit better now. And so this, I want it to, probably right now, it's probably about the exact same size. Yep. As the inside. So I'm going to cut another ring out. That one's a little too big. So I'm just going to go a size smaller. Center that as best I can. All right. So get that vaguely triangle shaped. I want to make sure that I don't drop it in there. But that looks like that's going to be about perfect, like that. I've got my lid here. And this is going to get centered in there. Now I've got to wet and scratch again. So I'm going to do that. Oh, that's wrong tool. Here we go. And I'm not being overly particular on this because I'm going to smooth a lot of these together. And we'll do the same thing with my ring of clay. Those have been wetted and scratched. And I'm going to get this centered as best I can first. So that's close to center. Doesn't have to be perfect. And now I'm just squishing those together a little bit. I like this a lot better than coils. A, I'm crap at rolling out coils. Um, and B, I don't have issues with them cracking and stuff on me so much if I just bend, bend it a little bit. So I'm going to try this on there first. Whoop. And I think... It's not too loose, not too tight, just right. So again, I'm going to take that rubber shaper tool and I'm going to use that to get and smooth this outside portion right into there. This is the, I think like the chisel tip or what, not chisel tip, but I don't know, taper tip. This is uh, from Royal Sovereign. It's the 10 millimeter size which is a centimeter if you know your metric. And then I'm just gonna go inside and clean out the inside as well. And yeah, thank you. Yeah, I've just started doing these hand-built bits uh, more recently. Um, you know, if it's up, you can, you know, you could throw, you know, the lid and then add the flange afterwards. Yeah, that holds on there pretty well. Tweak it a little bit. To... So I'm just rounding some of these corners now with my fingers. And if you need to stretch the flange out, you'll notice it's still moving a little bit on here. So if I need to get the shape just right, let's see if that. So these can come out just a little bit. 
So I'm just pushing out a little bit. So it's kind of like a little bit of a trial and error sort of thing. And these will, I will dry them together. So that helps quite a bit. And then I'm just smoothing that so I don't have a sharp edge with my finger. And so there's my lid. I'm gonna carve some edges onto here so it's not perfectly round, so it matches the facets. And this is gonna get carved here in a little bit. Um, next, I've got a knob I need to put on here. So again, um, what I've done, so here's a, here's a finished lid from the one that I showed at the beginning. So you see how I've, I've carved some facets on the side and I've added a knob. So I'm gonna do the same thing. So for the knob, I'm just pinching a piece of clay. Hello, Ontario. Wood tool, this one, this is from Continental Clay. It's in their uh, native Minnesota hardwoods section on their tools part of their website. So I can just pinch this, you know, into a knob shape. I have one that I started earlier. Um, and the reason I started it earlier is because I need it. I want it to start to set up. So it's a little bit past, tilt this up again, sorry. It's a little bit past leather hard. Oh, what time is it? I don't know how long I, too far. I've only got 15 minutes left, guys. Oh no, I'm going so slow here. So that's hand built. Boop. So that's gonna go, this is way too big. So I'm gonna take my wire knife. Cut that down a little bit. Now this is one I can start carving a little bit off of it. So I'm just carving it so it also has similar texture to my faceted areas on the bottom. So you can see I'm starting to carve that. Hi, Brittany. Yeah, so Continental Clay, Minnesota Native Hardwood Tools. All right, and then it's got too much on the top of it. Let's see. All right, and then And I don't want these to look perfect. Um, the texture here on that I'm on these, I'm kind of referencing when I was a kid, we had some of these figures that were like hand carved little wood figurines. Um, and so that kind of like um, chiseled carved wood texture, I really like. And I think it translates okay to into clay. So I've got that. I'm going to tap this connection just a little bit so it spreads that out a little bit. And I'm finding where our center is. I don't want to push too hard here because hollow bottom, right? But if I, this has got a lot of clay here. It's solid. So I'm going to push the clay from the middle to the outside when I do this. There we go. And then should be able to stick that on there. And I'm just applying pressure. I don't want to smooth it in because that's going to ruin the texture that I just put on there. But I will take my rubber shaper and finish that up. Get that. 
Okay, so we're getting there. Um, next would be the handle. So what I did is I pulled a big, um, this is from a coil um, or that I did earlier today. So I have some options for handles. Um, and sometimes it's nice to have some clay to play with what sort of shape or connection this would have. So this is gonna have one coming right off the back. And so all I'm gonna do is cut part of this off. Hey, there we go. So I've got a big, I'm getting rid of my, taking my lid off of the teapot, setting that off to the side. And I need some water. I'm gonna, I've got way more handle than what I need, which is always good. I've got about probably hold twice as much as what I need. So I'm just going to hold this next to the teapot. It's going to come up. So let's see, come up and then back down. So right there ought to be good. So I've cut this top portion off here and I'm just gonna use the side of my thumb to flatten him out. And most of the time I don't pre-pull or pre-make my handles. I pull them right off of a big hunk of clay. But for some of these, it's it's I want the clay to be a little bit firmer and close to the right shape before I get started. So I'm just pinching it a little bit to refine that shape just a smidge. It's a little thicker on one half than the other. Like I said, I'm not good at rolling coils. Flatten it out. So this is what I'm starting with. All right. Yeah, I don't mind a little. If I need to go over, I can. Okay, Stacy, you just tell me when I have to stop and I'll stop, okay? How about that? So when Stacy yells at me, then I'll stop. All right, so I am going to, where's my tool? There we go, wet and scratch. And then my handle, I'm gonna place that opposite, stick that there. And that gives me a little wet spot so I know where to score. And now I want to think about where my bottom attachment is going to be. This is going to come up and then reattach right down here. So I'm going to score a little bit right down there. All right, so this, now I can attach. And I'm pushing pretty firmly. Start in the center and I push myself work to either side. There we go. All right, so we are going to get this pulled straight off of here. I've got a bucket of water off the side, but this is, I'm just gonna make a mess on my floor, which is okay for stuff like this. I'm just slowly pulling this. Whoops, sometimes that happens. Score a little better. There we go. I must not have pushed hard enough. Just the teapots usually, I usually let the teapot sit up a little bit more. Um, since I'm doing this live, I'm trying to get her done. All right. For you right away. Get that. There we go. All right. So. A nice 
nice little thumb groove on here. So I might carve this handle a little bit. So, yeah, this one's gonna get carved after the fact. So I'm gonna lift him up. And I'm gonna hang him off my table a little bit. Right about there. So I'm just going to cut off the extra. There we go. All right. This might be the worst handle demonstration I've ever given, guys. I have a lovely YouTube video of me pulling stuff straight off pots that looks a little nicer. Like I said, the teapot's not quite set up as firm as I typically like it for pulling a handle straight off of, but we're making it work. So I'm going to start pushing this handle in on the bottom. I'm going to set this tool to support the inside. I'm going to set that right inside of there. It's got a nice flat spot. I'm going to wet my fingers too for the outside so I can support there. And then I can really Give this a push in. And if I need to push it back out, I can. So now it's attached and that's a really derpy shape. So now we have to refine the shape a little bit. So I'm gonna push up and this is going to go back down into the teapot hello oh someone just sent me a link cotton of clay oh thank you jocelyn all right, so I know I'm going over my time. Stacy's gonna yell at me when I have to get off. Otherwise, I'm just gonna keep trucking. So I'm just setting this up to be a little more angular. This can actually come up just a little bit taller. There we go. And I'm not overly concerned about, you can see the attachments a little better, about all my fingerprints on here. I'm going to carve away at that here shortly. Now, I'm gonna take my lid, set my lid back on there, and you'll notice my lid doesn't fit anymore. Um, but I'm gonna be carving it. So we're gonna start, I guess we can start with the lid. So to, to get these carved the way that I like them, so we're about 90% done here. To get the, I'm sitting on something. There we go. Is I use a vegetable peeler, which this was like eight bucks at the grocery store. Fifteen minutes or so, okie doke. And then my wire knife and sometimes a fettling knife or just a regular trim tool. So. I'm gonna set this on there so I know where my front, back, and my sides are. I'm just gonna kinda make a little bit of a line, kinda where my sides line up with stuff. There we go, so I know how much I can take off. And like I said, you can't put the, it's, it's hard to put stuff back on, so I, I, don't, I, wanna, I don't wanna take off too much. Now, I'm 
Now it fits. <laughs> there we go. So now it's just a matter of rounding the sides off so they have this nice carved look. So I just take the vegetable peeler. And run it through here. So I'm just getting rid of basically giving everything a nice beveled edge. I'll do the top side. You'll start seeing it come into play here. So this, these beveled edges um, are what I'm getting at when I start thinking about how these, this texture reminds me of those, like we had these carved figurines. I had this little carved sculpture. One of them was a sailor with like the big jacket the and the pipe. And there was like a seagull. Um, but the, I have some fond memories of some of these toys when I was a kid. So this, these like hand carved sort of carved out of wood texture if you guys have ever seen like hand carved figurines um yeah i really like that so that's the the edges of this so hopefully you can see how those are beveled a bit now and so i'm just trying to get textures on, on stuff that, that start to relate to one another. So there's our lid. That fits on there pretty well, I think. And see how this is starting to come together now. Now I have to do the same thing with the spout. So... I'm just starting to shave it a little bit. I like this vegetable peeler because this part flips around so I can get into some of these tighter spaces. This one has an added bonus of having a zester on the back too for, you know, you need some like lemon, you need some orange zest in your, your old fashioned while you're working or something. Cheers, by the way. Um, so you can start to see how the texture is starting to show up. Oh God, focus, Facebook. It doesn't want to focus on my spout. All right. So I'm just going to keep carving. And I'll go right to, if I can get it right to the edge of the spout, without quite going through. <laughs> We're all day drinking. That, that was just a mug of beer.
All right, so you guys can start to see. See how soft everything still is. I can wiggle that around. But it's starting to get this carved texture, which I'm gonna have to let everything set up a little bit more before I touch it and ruin it. Um, so that's about it. This extra on the bottom, once this sets up, I will carve this part off and give it a bevel with this and this tool, just like I showed with the rest of it. Um, I am contemplating adding some feet to one of these. Um, don't know yet. Here's one from my last wood firing. Um, it doesn't quite pour as well as I want it to. So that's why uh, someone asked about why this spout's pointing downwards. Um, so that's hopefully to get the, the, the dribble to stop a little quicker. This one dribbles out of the spout just a little bit. So that's why it's not up on my website. Um, I've got one or two things I'm gonna try. Um, I've got some sanding I might be able to do to get it to pour better. We'll see how that goes. But anyways, I'm probably gonna hop off now. Thank you so much everybody who turned in. Um, here's the finished one. So this was wood fired. You can see the, this one I left round at the top. It doesn't jiggle much. And then I've got a little backfill that I added in here too, um, which I'll probably add. Um, you'll see how I flat, I carved the handle so it's the outside of it's got some, some edges to it. The inside's nice and smooth because that's where your hand is, but the outside's carved a little bit. And you can see how the spout's carved as well. So I had to leave the spout thick so I can carve everything. Um, and again, this has got a slab bottom that I just smooth everything down. So this is the finished project. Um, yeah, the knobs are a lot of fun. I always figure like if you've got a vegetable or a piece of fruit, um, you know, in nature or in your garden or whatever, like the, the stems on those never come straight out. They're always a little off kilter. Hey, Victoria! So, um, before I log off, do you guys want to see some puppies? This is bonus, bonus right here. We have eight week old puppies upstairs. Those of you that heard them whining at the beginning, you're gonna have to pardon. They live in our kitchen. So our kitchen's a little bit of a shit show in the literal sense. Big yellow mop bucket. Whew, it's important. There's Samwise. He's my pottery puppy, he's ours. Hey, Sammy. And the puppies. Five of them are right here. All the boys. Yeah. So they're saying hi. We got one that's sleepy. Oh, hello. I'm gonna try flipping it around. So those are the puppies, eight weeks old. <laughs> They're trying to give you guys kisses for tuning in. Anyways, I will uh, leave you with this lovely sight of puppies and uh, take care, everybody.